السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى وبعد Our dear viewers welcome to another live edition of our program Ask Huda Our phone numbers area code 002 then 023855 131 area code 002 then 01005469323 and the two WhatsApp numbers area code 001347806125 Last WhatsApp number is area code 001-361-489-1503 and we're live on my page, M. Salah Official. Um, our first caller, Assalamu Alaikum, Sister Sumaya from the USA. Sister Sumaya, Assalamu Alaikum. Yes, Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh, brother. Can you hear me? Nope, I can barely hear you. Can you raise your voice, please? Oh, okay. Now can you hear me? Okay, it's better now. Go ahead, Sister Sumaya. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say Jazakallahu Khair for this. I keep calling you again and again because Alhamdulillah, this is a blessing from Allah that you have this question and answer session via call. So I'd like to thank you first for that. You're most welcome. And Alhamdulillah. Okay, so my question is regarding the jilbab. So this is my only question for today, but I have broken it down. So what is, what is the ruling regarding the jilbab? Do women have to have to wear an outer garment over their usual dress? Because Allah says in the Quran regarding women past childbearing age that they can discard the outer garment. Does this mean that women who can bear children and who are of the age of marrying have to put on an outer garment what if the clothing that they usually wear is itself loose and it's opaque and it's long and it fulfills all the conditions of jilbab does she still have to put on an outer garment or is that clothing enough of its own so you know i wear abaya during the summertime it gets so hot what i do is i make sure that my abaya is loose and long and thick enough that i don't have to wear an extra clothing underneath maybe just a trouser trouser uh, so that that's my question i think you get the gist of it so yeah i'd love to hear from you and there's like this debate regarding the jilbab whether you have to wear it or not so i'd like to know the clarification from you okay barakallah fiik sister sumaya from the usa thank you so much and uh, appreciate making dua for us may allah accept and same to you uh, Sister Sumaya is referring to ayah number 60 of Surah An-Nur, the light chapter, in which Allah the Almighty addressed a special ruling concerning uh, a specific category of women known as Al-Qawaidu min al-Nisa. But Al-Qawaidu min al-Nisa, Sister Sumaya, doesn't mean the women beyond the childbearing age. No. It means women who are not into marriage anymore because they have reached such a very old age. The Quran explained, لا يرجون نكاح and women of post-menstrual age who have no desire for marriage and also they are not being desired to be taken as wives because they are old like grandmothers, you know. So there is no blame upon them for putting aside their outer garment, but without displaying their adornment, غَيْرَ مُتَبَرَّجَاتٍ بِزِينَ Then the conclusion also says, وَأَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْنَ خَيْرٌ لَهُنْ But to modestly refrain from that is better for them. If they still keep their outer garment and their full hijab and, you know, like young women, that is better for them. And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. All here are all knowing. Wallahu Samiyun Alim. So it's not 
exactly as you said that women beyond childbearing age because maybe women at their 50s but they look young they're being desired 60 70 okay so if there is a shahwa if there is a desire in them then keep on your regular hijab as is okay otherwise it is okay for women of all age to take off their outer garment but not displaying any zina not this I mean this they should they shouldn't sit with their sleepwear or remove their scarves or wear a v-neck or short sleeves okay غير متبرجات بزينة just to give them some ease because they are at an old age as for the uh, jilbab for women anything that serves the purpose would do it whether it's a long dress whether it is a kameez that uh, women normally wear as long as it is loose and it is not see-through loose it doesn't describe the details of the body and uh, uh, it is not see-through it is opaque then it is perfectly fine to wear it assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brother abdul aziz from the netherlands assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sheikh how are you today assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome to the program akhi okay uh, thank you sheikh thank you sheikh and barakallahu fikum for all the good work that you're doing you and your team so i have one question sheikh today it's relating to to study because um uh, i'm planning to study like physical therapy but as you know like is a is a field you even like in school like you know you you have to touch like you know you have to touch people you have to touch your your, your classmates you know it can be like a female so i want to know like if he's if he's okay if he's allowed what is the ruling okay i will be happy to answer you inshallah brother abdul aziz from the netherland physical therapy is a branch of um you know medicine or supplementary to medicine and it is really important and it is definitely needed both for men and women in islam it is not permissible for a man to touch a female who is not lawful for him nor for a female to touch a male who is not lawful for her unless in some necessary cases a surgeon a doctor who has to check on a patient and we don't have the same gender doctor then it is permissible and in this case a woman or the man may show the body part which needs to be checked out or diagnosed and cover the rest of the hour in the case of physical therapy there are as many female physical therapists as men exactly maybe more in some countries this is as far as i know uh, but not necessarily in every locality so while you're practicing your physical therapy it is not a necessity for you to give physical therapy where you would have to use your hands your bare hands in touching a woman and uh, sometimes massaging some of her body parts who is not lawful for you a woman who is not lawful for you is not permissible when does it become permissible somebody post operation okay some people who have just changed uh, one of their knees and they cannot walk they need a couple months up to six months of physical therapy okay just to enable them to walk sometimes they use a walker and so on so there is no direct uh, contact where uh, you know you have to put your hands on the patient and so on it's okay but whenever you have to put your hands on the patient he must be uh, uh, of the same gender otherwise it is not permissible for you for the patient who cannot find the same gender physical therapist it is permissible to seek the help of the opposite gender why because we don't have available one wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'la assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi brother ali from the usa assalamu alaykum wa alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh go ahead ali please hey wh uh, what do i do if i uh, 
I don't know anybody or I can't find anybody uh, to whom to give zakat. To give zakat? Yeah. Well, Akhi Ali, you're calling from the USA. There are many non-profit organizations whom you can give them your zakat and sleep in peace. You can give it to Esna, you can give it to Ekna, you can give it to any of these organizations who look after uh, Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh, in some places on the borders with Malaysia. Uh, you can send it uh, online. You can make the, um, uh, the, the payment online to Human Relief, Islamic Relief, many of these uh, organizations. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from Kenya. Hello. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Fatima. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Welcome to the program. Go ahead. Wa alaikum salam. Shukran. Um, I have like three questions or four. Mm -hmm. um, my first question is, what is the difference between punishment from Allah and a test from Allah? That is my first question. Uh, uh, my second question is, um, how can you differentiate if you are being punished or you are being tested by Allah? Uh, um, my third question is, can you go to the gym with full hijab where there are no men, where there are men, and uh, you exercise, but you don't get contact with the men, you just get the instruction from the instructor? Um, my fourth question is, um, I have a student, uh, a Hifden Quran student who comes to teach my, uh, my boy's Quran, and uh, I, he has been teaching me, but then someone told me that it is wrong for him to teach me because he's not, uh, my husband is not there. So can he teach me or, because my children are there, they are present. They are present. How old is he? Mm. How old is he? You said he's your student? Um, he's around like, in a, I don't know, but I think he's around 20, 22. And he's teaching you. And who I'm is not there? very sure about the age. Okay. And, and uh, whenever, huh? whenever he's teaching you at home, who is there with you? Fatima? My two boys. How old are one, they? My, my first born is 12 and the other one is seven, seven years. Okay, I got your question, and inshallah, I will answer you right now. Uh, Brother Abdul Malik from Germany. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you, Sheikh? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Uda, Abdul Malik. Alhamdulillah, first of all, Jazakallah khair. I now found uh, the episode of Gardens of the Pies online <laughs> where I was asking it several times. So thank you very much. Um, my question is that I have today, <clears throat> if you, for example, uh, you are in a restaurant and you are eating and you're ordering something and you are for sure, you know for sure that the cook also touches pork and um, uh, is it then and, and touches your food, your food, for example, let's assume pizza or something, is it um, halal to eat or is it not permissible to of eat? That's my question, not. Barakallahu Fik. Yeah, of course it is not. Abdul Malik, if you eat okay. some... Yes. If you eat somewhere and you know that they have cooked in the same pan where they cooked pork or pepperoni, yeah. it's not permissible because the taste is there. Okay, and what do we do? You eat halal. You know, you don't have to eat in that particular restaurant. Okay? Eat okay, but for example, if we're in Germany, for example, there are many restaurants like, for example, if we eat Chinese food and it's... You do not always 100% know yeah. whether they, they change or not. So this is uh, also not permissible at all. Okay, I will answer you so that you don't have to stay on the line. I, I, I lived in the States. I travel all over Europe. And uh, if I have to go to a restaurant which is not a Muslim restaurant, Muslim restaurants are all over, alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. But when I have to go to a restaurant where uh, it is not a Muslim restaurant, I demand, um, number one, as I said, if I have to, I demand that, you know, if you're going to fry this in a separate frying pan. When they assure me and uh, they're trustworthy, I can eat. But you say, if you're certain that, you know, this is contaminated with pork or have some, it's cooked in the same uh, pans or on the same grill, like uh, uh, pork or swine flesh, 
that is not permissible. Okay? Barakallahu feek. Jazakallahu khayran. Uh, let's go to Sister Fatima from Kenya. What is the difference, be the difference between the punishment and the test from God? And how can one differentiate? This is like a very tricky question because we can write books about the punishment and the tests and the trials. But by the end, you would need a confirmation that this is a test, not a punishment, or a punishment, not a test. But by the end, what is the outcome? What are you going to do? I always, you always, you know, you blame yourself. In a sense, if you know that you've done something wrong. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة Allah swears to the self-blaming self because we're full of shortcomings. So when you do something wrong and it is followed by a punishment or a punishment comes later, something bad happens to you, a test or a trial, somebody got laid off, failed an exam or an interview. So he refers that to maybe because I've done something bad. It's perfectly okay. Somebody who's, mashallah, very pious, very righteous, يعني you barely uh, notice that he's done anything bad, but he's being tested and tried. That too is normal, because the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء The most severely tested people are the prophets. And then people will be tested in proportion with the level of their iman. يعني those who have higher iman will be tested more, so that Allah will raise them into higher ranks. And when they die, they die with no sins. Because one of the means of the tests and the trials is one of the benefits of the tests and the trials is that they erase sins. They remit mistakes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ما يصيب المسلم من هم ولا نصب ولا وصب حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كفر الله بها من خطايا. Anything that afflicts a believer. Anything that afflicts a believer, pay attention to this hadith. He said, you see, so that's an affliction. Do we know it's a punishment or it's a means of tests and trials? We don't know yet, okay. But once it befalls a person and he endures it patiently, it removes some of his sins. Allah washes him off of his sins, okay. So that it's a punishment or a test or a trial, it serves a purpose. It purifies a believer from some of his sins. Then the believing people will be tested and tried more than others so that when they meet Allah, they meet Allah with no sins. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Ali from India. Ali, assalamu alaikum. Okay, let's try another call. Muhammad from India. Assalamu alaikum. Are you talking, Muhammad? Can you hear me? Let's take another call, Brother Mufid from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. Mufid, Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh. Yes. Uh, is he uh, the salah that uh, if he needs something to be granted from? Yeah, Mufid here. Is any salah that is, is something that uh, to be granted from Allah, salah should be... Uh... I'm listening, Mufid. Go ahead. Mufid. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead, Mufid. Uh, I have a question, Sheikh. Uh, suppose if you need something to be granted from Allah, If you need something to be granted from Allah, which type of salah you need to uh, do? Got it. Okay. Thank you. Brother Taha from Sudan. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Try again, Brother Taha. Let's go back to Sister Fatima from Kenya. Go into the gym. Mix gym, men and women. I don't care even if you're wearing your four hijab. Exercise. Jumping jacks back and forth, bending over, you know, 
lifting weight, running and jogging. Let me tell you something, Sister Fatima. In Tawaf and in Asai, there is a recommendation in Asai every time you do Sa'i between Safa and Al Marwa. All men are recommended to jog in certain area because Hajar, peace be upon her, was jogging while looking for water for Ismail in this, area, in this segment. But women are not allowed to jog in this area. They just walk regularly. In walking briskly in the first tawaf, only for men, women are not allowed to walk briskly, walk modestly. Why? When you jog, there is a possibility of exposing uh, your body parts. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur? When he described the kind of hijab in Surah Al-Ahzab 59, and he described how a woman should uh, you know, cover up in Surah An-Nur, he ended up the ayah by saying, وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنَّ And let, let them not stand with their feet so that their zina will be exposed. They are hiding their zina. Maybe they're wearing some jewelry, such as in the past they were, they used to wear necklace, or they used to wear anklets. So when they jog by stamping their feet, it makes noise, and people would look at it. Modesty requires that the woman. The concept of hijab is to veil yourself from men who are not uh, your mahram. They are not your family members. Okay. So going to the gym and jogging and having a male instructor is something that we don't do in Islam. Uh, if there is a gym for the sisters or there is a segment for the ladies, go enjoy it while wearing your proper outfit uh, as well. Otherwise, mashallah, everyone can have a, a treadmill at home and can walk in the park and can exercise at home and so on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from India. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing fine, brother Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, brother, I have a question. No. So, uh, I'm working in a software company. I'm from India. So, if you know, most of the software companies will be holding banking projects. Uh, unlike banking projects, there will be more other projects also there. So I unwittingly the people may assign me to some banking projects. You can we know that in the in the repo is one of the major sins in our religion. So it 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 is like this if I'm doing something, some creating some software for my company, my company will be giving that software to the bank, which means I am indulging in repo as well. Okay, I got your question, Akhi Muhammad. It is not permissible for a Muslim to take part in any project which he knows that it is to serve something which is forbidden. What is the reference? Ayah number two of Surah Al-Ma'idah. وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ You're not allowed to cooperate or help one another in doing anything which is categorized as sin or transgression. You're only allowed and you're encouraged تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى So that's why when it came to riba, the Prophet ﷺ didn't just curse uh, the person who charges interest. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْرِبَى آكِلَهُ وَمُؤْكِلَهُ وَكَاتِبَهُ وَشَاهِدَيْهُ Okay, how many people? Six people. Al-riba itself. آكِلَهُ The one who charges interest. مُؤْكِلَهُ The one who pays interest. Willingly and under regular circumstances, not due to necessity, okay? Because he wants to expand his business, so he's borrowing with interest. That's haram. Katibahu, the clerk, the accountant, the one who writes down your contract, okay? The banker, washahidai, if witnesses are needed. Sometimes uh, the sponsors, likewise, you know, so I sponsor the person to take a loan and uh, I'm his sponsor, and this loan with interest, that's not permissible. So if I'm doing a program to serve this, if I'm doing a program to a bank which has nothing to do with interest or taking loans or charging interest, it's, it's okay. I do programs, and I program softwares and uh, programs for people who are not mainly undertaking a halal job, 
as long as the segment I'm doing is halal. So if the bank is doing whatever project has nothing to do with interest, you're allowed to do this, a software that serves that purpose. But when it comes to the interest part, you're not allowed to take part in that. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Shihab from the UK, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, and thank you for asking, Brother Shihab. Welcome to Ask Wada. Go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, I want to ask you how to deal with the issue of shaking hands with the opposite gender, especially if it's for interview. I, 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 I missed that. How to deal with what issue? Of uh, shaking hands with the opposite gender. Oh, okay. Okay. I got uh, especially if it's for interview for jobs or for university. I got your question, Brother Shihab. That was answered in the last episode as well. So before that, Mufid from Kuwait, if you have something in mind, you want it Allah to fulfill it, you want to invoke Allah what to do. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر فزع إلى الصلاة. This is what the hadith says. Whenever anything would worry the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or he wanted or demanded anything from Allah or needed an immediate help, he would rush to pray. الصلاة. Is there like a specific prayer? Brother, if it is the fard namaz, like you know, we have five daily prayers, mashallah. So maximum couple hours between two prayers. So pray the fard and the obligatory, the obligatory prayer. Then in your sujood, ask Allah, oh Allah make it easy for me to get the job. Oh Allah make it easy for me to marry that girl. Make it easy for my wife to give birth. Make it easy for whoever is in the ICU to recover. In the salah, in your sujood. Uh, you don't know Arabic? In your language. It's okay. Um, there is no current prayer and I need this help right away. Once um, I was running a clinic and there came a patient who had an overdose and he was about to expire. So I knew that I cannot help him. And you know, superior doctors were helping. So what I did is, I just offered the prayer. It was voluntary prayer, any sunnah. And I prolonged my sujood and I kept asking Allah and begging him to cure that person and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted, alhamdulillah. But sunnah, nafila, you can do that. There is no particular prayer that you have to offer in order to ask Allah for your need to be fulfilled. Obviously, when the Prophet ﷺ said, the best position and the closest that brings you to Allah is whenever you are frustrating yourself in the salah. There is no independent frustration that you make it outside the salah, such uh, as what people do sometimes. They wanted to thank Allah. They wanted to ask from Allah, so they just make sujood after the salah and they keep asking. There is no such thing as sujood is to be in the salah. But there is something called sajdat al-shukr. Once it is fulfilled, your need has been fulfilled, good news have been delivered, bad things have been removed, you fall in frustration to give thanks to Allah, correct. Even without wudu, that's called sujood or shukr. Barakallah feekum. We'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes for some more. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, I hope inshallah you will have the reminder with our phone numbers and the contact informations as they should appear on the bottom of the screen. Meanwhile, let me take uh, some questions from the page. My Hadi, what is the ruling if one doesn't make ghusl before Jum'ah and keeps on being negligent of that matter? Performing ghusl before Jum'ah is an emphatic sunnah. If you don't do it, you miss its reward, but the prayer is valid. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Faiza from Canada. Sister Faiza, yeah. Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. Uh, brother, uh, we appreciate you make a show like this and uh, we uh, can ask questions and learn from you. 
Uh, my question is uh, going back to the point you made about uh, riba in the hadith. Uh, you said that um, the person who's giving uh, riba or like paying in, in riba form is uh, as guilty as the one who's taking the money, right? Mm -hmm. This is what the Prophet said in the hadith. Yes, and uh, just fo following with that point, we're planning to buy a home in here, and in here to buy a house, it uh, costs a lot of money. It's like about $500,000 for a nice area mm. uh, a home. And uh, in that regard, you have to actually uh, borrow money, and, uh, and then there's interest, and then in certain time of years, you have to pay that money back. Um, uh, that's my first question is uh, how how do i go around like uh, there is muslim um people who say they they sell houses to you with no interest but in the allahu alam it looks like it, their, Sister their Faiza, price is higher Sister because Faiza, there's you're interest asking about, already added. you're asking about the mortgage correct yes yes okay. yeah mortgage it yes. is not permissible under regular circumstances to buy a house or a vehicle or a business where you borrow money from the bank and you have to pay interest. That is not permissible. Listen to what mm, I said earlier. Uh, just keep in mind, I said under regular circumstances where it is not a necessity, okay? I don't have to buy that house of the 500,000 in a nice neighborhood. I can buy something that is affordable, then when I earn more money, I can sell it and move to a better area and so on. Under regular circumstances, borrowing money with interest is not permissible, whether for buying a house or buying a brand new car or whatever. May Allah guide us to what is best. If the house is financed by owner, where the house, whether for Muslims or non-Muslims, it happens a lot. So he says that, you know, the house worth hundred but because you're not gonna be paying cash I will take the money over a couple years uh, th the house will be a hundred twenty thousand is that permissible that is permissible and that is totally different than the interest based transaction because we have a fixed price the price is 120 this is all what I'm gonna be paying okay I don't pay percentage as interest the price is known beforehand barakallahu feekum Sister Nadia from Canada, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for asking, Sister Nadia. Good. Um, yeah, I have a two questions. Uh, my first question is, um, my cousin is back home and uh, there are a lot of poor people. Uh, I want to help those people like monthly basis. So what do we have planned? Uh, to send some money to my cousin so he can buy a car and he uh, work on it and make profit and then distribute this money like monthly to this, those poor people. Uh, so I just want to make sure do I get reward for that because uh, this uh, money I'm sending for, for him to buy a car is going to be like a gift. Uh, so whatever money he Sister Nadia, are you done? Uh, yeah, do you got my question? I did. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, one more question. The other question is, um, should I pay zakat uh, for my pension, which I don't really know how much is it? Uh, do, we, do we have to pay zakat every year? Okay, barakallahu feeki. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're Bye. most welcome. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Aisha from Sudan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Abu Aisha, go on please. Go ahead, Akhi. I don't know whether you're hearing me. I'm not getting you on the phone. Yes, I hear but you. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. If you are hearing, I can present my question. Go on, please. You are hearing. Okay, fantastic. Um, my question is uh, about Salah. Just wanted to know at what point, like, for example, um, if you are coming out of sujood, you want to, you have to 
sit down for your tashahud. But um, in case you forget and almost getting up, at what point do you have to continue or should you come back for your tashahud? Okay. I mean, if your hands are still on the ground, is it still okay to go down or you should continue? Or if your knees are on the ground, should you continue or do you uh, come back and uh, make your tashahud? That's my question. Thank you very much. I'm not hearing you though, but thanks. Shukran. Okay. Once you hang up, inshallah, you will be able to hear me. Um, Sister Nadia from Canada, she wants to send some money to her cousin or whoever in order to buy a vehicle to work on it, generate a profit, and out of this profit, he can send monthly support to certain poor people. May Allah bless you and your family. May Allah increase your wealth and keep you in good health. Will you be rewarded for that? Your earning is lawful and you send this money with good intention. Reward is guaranteed. May Allah accept from all of you. And it is one of the means of increasing your provision. No doubt in that. Okay? Just keep in mind that this is not out of the zakah payment. Why? Because in the case of the zakah, you hand over the money to those who are eligible and they do whatever they want to do with it. You don't buy them a car, you don't buy them, you give them the cash. Or if it is an organization who are in charge of distributing the zakah, they take, that, they take care of that on your behalf. But if it is voluntary charity, I can assure you, inshallah, uh, this is a wonderful work. I highly encourage you to go ahead and do it. Uh, especially those who are living, inshallah, abroad, they're living a decent life. They have, they're well off, and they have some saving. They, they have plenty of wealth. Remember your family members. Remember people back home who go to sleep without dinner, and they don't even have breakfast. And in certain occasions, such as uh, during back to school, those people who struggle to buy clothes, plastic uh, tools, school tools for their children, it is very painful. They are experiencing poverty, so keep them always in your mind. And begin with family members. As the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Al awla bil -ma'ruf. Those who are related to you are more worthy of helping and supporting them and giving them in charity. And when he was asked, some people were kind of skeptical. Uh, you know, do we get a reward if we give in a charity to our relatives? He said, as a matter of fact, it is double reward. A reward for giving in a charity and a reward for upholding the ties of kinship. So congratulations, Sister Nadia, for intending to do so. May Allah make it easy for you. Uh, Abu Aisha from Sudan asked about forgetting the middle tashahud in any prayer. Then what to go, what to do, how to go about it. We say, if you forgot it and you are halfway before you stand up and you remember it, or if you were imam and you were about to go and somebody said, Subhanallah, reminded you, sit back. And then recite the middle tashahud. And after the prayer, make the two prostrations for forgetfulness. What if you just stood up already, said Allahu Akbar, and uh, or you're closer to standing and you remember. But somebody said, Subhanallah, it's too late. The reason because you're already involved with a pillar which is the third rak'ah, the standing, while the middle tashahud isn't a pillar. So you don't skip a pillar for a wajib or a sunnah. So in this case, you just make the two prostrations for forgetfulness by the end of the prayer, and that's it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Fuse from the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Wa alaikum assalam, Fuse. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Shaykh. So I would like to get on the question right away, not to waste time. So my question is, what is the ruling on sending blessings on the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in the first sitting after reciting a tahiyyah? Is it a sunnah or wajib? Does it affect the validity of my prayer if a person doesn't send blessings on the Prophet in the first tashahud? That's a smart question, Farouz. Do you have any other questions? No, Sheikh. Okay, That's got all. it. 
All right. Assalamu alaikum. Al Hajj from Gambia. Hajj, try again, please. No problem. Farooz from the USA. I hope you guys got his question. He said, In the middle of Tashahud, what if I go beyond what is prescribed? What is prescribed is to say, At Tahiyatu Lillah, Wa Salawat wa Tayyibat, Assalamu alaikum, Ayuhan Nabi, wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatu, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadi lahi salheen. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. right? then you say the same in the last شهود. in addition to اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد. what if I do the full تشهد in the middle تشهد that is not permissible. why? because الصلاة توقيفية. but it's a good thing. it's a good thing to do a lot of good thing. but the timing and the prescription to go by what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prescribed. He said in the hadith, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli Pray as you have seen me praying. So in the middle tashahud, you stop at, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Then, in the last one, you say, you say the tashahud, in addition to, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, for a salah al-Ibrahimiyya. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Khadija from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Khadija, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How are you? Great, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Sheikh, I have uh, a decision that I have to make and I wanted to do salat. Okay. Istikhara. Istikhara. My only problem is I don't know the dua by heart. Can I read it from a book and then say my need? Absolutely. Um, before, True. you know. Yes. You and also that. my second question is, it's the same question for Salat Istikhara. How do I know which decision to go by after I do my Salat? Inshallah. Okay. 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 So, Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Jazana wa yakum, Sister Khadija from USA. Thank you so much. Uh, we ran out of time, but let me quickly wrap it up by answering Sister Khadiza's question. Uh, if you're non-Arab, you don't know how to recite, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika wa astakhiruka bi'qudaratika wa as'aluka min fadlika al-azim. It is actually prescribed to be said after the prayer. So after you recite, you, you offer the two rak'ahs with the intention of praying istikhara, and soon after you make the shahud, you say uh, the supplication. Can I read it from a paper? Can I read it from my smartphone? And I add to it the subject that I'm consulting Allah and its concern? Yes, absolutely true. You can do that. That is permissible. So you read it from your phone. You read uh, the Arabic. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika wa astakhiruka bi'qudratika wa as'aluka min fadlika al-azim. You already don't know the meaning. Alhamdulillah. O oh Allah, concerning my marriage, concerning that person, concerning that vehicle, concerning traveling to India this summer, concerning whatever, if you know that this is good for me in my hereafter, in my dunya, then make it easy for me, yani the meaning of the supplication. Can I read it? That is permissible. As how to know what Allah wants you to, uh, to choose or what He chose for you. Uh, there are multiple ways multiple ways it could be by mere inspiration you feel comfy about this choice somebody is proposing uh, to you for instance two or three people and i prayed istikhara concerning x y and z then my heart is open concerning why the person i feel like subhanallah you know i feel more tendency towards them okay this is a sign also when other people came to visit, somebody made a big mistake, somebody he said he's coming and he never showed up. Um, you know, things happen and they made the picture clearer to me. This is a sign of istikhara. Some people are under the impression that when I pray istikhara, I should pray it before going to sleep because I should expect to see a dream. So they pray it once, twice, and several times they say, I haven't seen a dream. Not necessarily. Not all. It's not even mentioned that it is one of the, the 
uh, it is required or you would see a dream but may it happen it may happen because you're thinking and you consulted Allah so in your dream you saw yourself with that person you saw yourself driving the car that you you own it and I hope it's not just hadith or nafs so this is a sign uh, you went to make the payment to buy the car and they said sorry it was the last one and sold out khalas alhamdulillah this is Allah's choice for you they said subhanallah yani we have the last piece and guess what we uh, we reduce the price 10 grams and you're very lucky all that is is a sign that Allah is facilitating for you this choice may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to what is best and forgive us all our shortcomings اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نشرك بك شيئا نعلمه ونستغفرك لما لا نعلمه أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته